Hey there, it's Courtney with RCK Livestock, where we document our journey to self-sustainability through our garden and our livestock. Today I'm going to talk to you about the second part of our series of the mealworm farming. So if you haven't watched that first video about starting your own mealworm farm and us cleaning the first batch of mealworms this year, then go ahead and I'll link it up here and go ahead and go take a look at it before you continue with this video or you'll be completely confused. So today we are going to sift the pupa, which was that second phase uh, after the mealworms where they are transforming into the darkling beetle. So we're sifting them out of the mealworm container into their own container so then they can do the transformation process and turn into beetles for us. This is one of the containers that we did for the mealworm farm. Now you can see that we do have more frass like we had. Um, I've been continuously adding some meal or the wheat bran because they're eating that up. They have their potatoes and this last time I just threw them in because I was being lazy but they dig into it and are eating out of it just fine. But as you can see we've got just a couple of little beetles. So we've got a couple little guys in there which means that we're getting close to everything starting to pupate, which as you can see, I can even just grab a little handful of pupa in here. So there's too many for me to pick through, and I have that pupa sifter. So we're gonna go ahead and run through that process. So the one thing that we're adding to the process is this pupa sifter, which I got from Space Coast Mealworms, and I am not affiliated with them, it's just, you know, the brand that I decided to go with. As far as I know, he's the only one that actively makes these in bulk. It just fits right into the trays that we were using a couple of weeks ago. And so this will just sift the pupa over the top. The mealworms will fall into the bottom and the frass will come out. The smaller mealworms will fall into this one and then the frass will come out the bottom. So we will go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is just put these potatoes in here. Everything that is inside of the potatoes is mealworms. So they don't need to be sifted through. And then we're, we're gonna go ahead and start sifting. All right, so everything is just falling through. And now as you can tell, we've only got pupa out there. So what I'm gonna do is I have a separate container I'm actually going to shake the mealworms out because there's mealworms on the bottom that are still falling through. And the reason this works is because the pupa's bodies and heads are too big to fit through. Now you will have maybe a, you know, just a few pupa, depending on the size of your worms and stuff, you'll have a few pupa that slip through. And that's okay, they're easy to kind of pick through when you're done. And this tray is pretty flexible, so if the heads get stuck, you can bend them. And who knows where mine is, but this little slit right here in the middle, there's a tool that you can push into it, twist, and then lift it up, rather than what I was doing and trying to pour it out. Now it does look like I have quite a few smaller pupa that slip through the cracks. And you could see them in there. So what you can do 
is go ahead and sift them again. And you can be as tedious or, you know, not caring as you want. I like to separate them out as much as possible, just so then I can keep everything somewhat organized and I know what's going on on the farm. Or you could even just hand pick them if you either don't have a large operation or if you just don't want to spend the money on the tray. And now all we have left, we've got a single little beetle guy in there. And then we've got those mealworms that are in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the mealworms in here. And then we should, unless I spilled some, which it looks like I did, spilled a couple of little pupa in there. So now all we have left in this tray is the mealworms and the wheat bran. And that gets sifted out just like we did on that first video and now in this bucket we have frass. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the pupa sifted and then once we're done with that we'll go ahead and move on to the next step on what we do with the pupa. We've got all the pupa sifted so this is everything that we got out of that sifting and now we need to separate them. We need to put them in a separate bin from the mealworms and beetles. So the next thing you're gonna need is what I usually use is one of these little Sterilite containers. And typically I will cut out a notch like a little doorway and I'll show you why here in a minute. But what we do is we have a drawer with bedding in it. There's a few beetles in the bin that we're gonna be using because there was the pupa that we found when we were sifting the mealworms last time. They've turned into beetles since then. So we're just going to add on to that since there's not enough beetles to really be breed at this point with them. So I'll show you what we're doing next. So we take our Sterilite container. I'll go ahead and cut out the notch later, but you just put the container right there on top of the bedding. And then you put the pupa right in there. You're gonna want to flatten them out. So then they're all kind of a single layer. And that's what we do. And you just leave them there until they turn into beetles. And then they're going to turn into beetles and then they'll crawl off and live down at the bottom. Now the purpose of separating the pupa from the beetles and the other mealworms is because like I said before in the first video, the beetles are cannibalistic. So if you leave them in with the beetles and the other mealworms, then they'll get eaten. So this is just a way to protect them. They do need humidity, but they don't need a food source or water source. So they just stay there for a couple weeks. They'll morph into the beetles and then they'll crawl right off of that container and live their lives. As you get closer to the beetle stage, you're gonna wanna add some potatoes and carrots and things like that. So then the beetles have something to eat and drink. But as of right now, it's really just kind of a waiting game and an intermittent process between the mealworms and the beetles and there's really no activity there. If you have any further questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'd love to have a conversation with you. If there's anything better that you know of or if you have a different process, go ahead and let me know as well. I'd love to learn new things and new ways to do things. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out with me and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.